<laughs> and so, um, is there any audio, Jeff? Uh, no sound at all. Uh, well, <laughs> this this was off. It turned it on. It went back off. It's back on. Could you turn that down? I had it turned up so I could hear if we had audio. We had our sound engineer in Seabrook was telling us we had no sound. So we have sound. We can we, sound. Can, can we, we figured out can Jeff we, didn't push the button. No, the time. button's supposed to be on. It, huh. it just wasn't lit. So it's <laughs> Jeff's fault. Oh, it could be. No. Well, let's see. Let's see if we have. That's let's right. see if we have God's garage back. Um, Brad, are you still with us? Yeah, I'm still with you on the Zoom call. Uh, okay. I tried to get to your live stream on my phone, and it says there's no live stream. Oh, okay. Well, um, you know, we've been – no, we haven't. Mars has been working on this for two hours, which is pretty typical every – every. Well, I've got it on I've got it on my phone. I've got it on here. So. Okay. Well, uh, at any rate, uh, so we're going to try to continue this. I kind of gave a little synopsis of the – the thief up there at God's garage. And uh, so the only thing that I can think of, and I'm sure that you thought of this too, Brad, is the fact that somebody knew that that truck was inside the garage. Yeah, you, you don't know what kind of local knowledge goes into that. But, uh, you know, we've got several trucks out here. And, you know, we have a few units we use to go pick up vehicles with. And uh, that was just one of them. Well, uh, that's a real shame. And, uh, yeah. You know, but uh, you've already recovered the vehicle, correct? Yeah, we we got it back. We found it up in Willis, uh, down a high line, down a four wheeler trail, and it was it's they it was just ditched. Um, guess guess it didn't meet the chop shop's requirements. So, uh, so you got it back. Uh, how how bad was the damage? Uh, it's it, cosmetic mostly because the truck's so old. You know, it's got some dents in the doors, and it has a ranch hand bumper on the front that got bent up and crush the grill but it'll still run but we have to replace the steering column because it's just completely wiped out well that's a real shame sorry yep that's all right do you it guys happened. do you guys not have any uh any security up there oh we have uh they they drove through a 14 foot wide 10 foot tall wrought iron fence to get out they they jumped the fence to get in we have 13 acres so we you know we have a lot of property so, it, you know, anybody can jump a fence. We, we have some cameras, and there was GPS tracking on the, on the truck. So we kind of have an idea who did it. Ah, well, that's good. Glad to hear that. Hey, well, the downside of it is we, we posted it on Facebook, and we ended up having 72,000 views of that. Oh, post. wow. Well, that's a real shame. Well, yeah. <laughs> it, it'd, be, it'd be nice if you can get some of them to turn into donors. Well, it, it appears that may happen. We've had just amazing amount of calls of people saying, hey, what do you need? You know, uh, and and then Channel 2 had us on their 10 o'clock news uh, last night, I think. Last okay. night. OK, well, good for them. Yeah. Good exposure. Well, I was going to say any exposure is good exposure. And, uh, it, yep. you know, gets the name out there and gets people saying the name as well. Same a name, same a name. Is, that, is it a Beyonce song? <laughs> Is it? I don't know. Oh, you do too. You're 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 a a, a a closeted fan. No, no. Not a big fan. No. Okay, just check. Britney Spears. <laughs> we freed Britney. Yeah. No, Britney's I'm free because of us. None of them. Well, uh, so I assume that the stolen truck is in the throes of getting fixed and put back together, and you're going to continue on using it. Yes, sir. It's what we do here. So okay. we'll just. Treat it like it was a donated vehicle that needs some work. So there you go. Tell us a little bit more about the TV RS3. Man, this this is a neat car. Uh, obviously, you know, British car. Um, our former board chair, he's still a board member, Ted Weirich. He's a United pilot, likes to mess around. Definitely a car guy. Just just bought a, a C7 Corvette, Don, so that he's, he's in the club now. Uh, but he donated this car to us to auction off to help raise money to build our new building. So... That thing is in great shape uh, for a car of its age. Uh, runs really well. Has a few little issues. It's on Bring a Trailer, so it's very, very well documented on Bring a Trailer. Um, so if people want to go bid morning, on it, they can go on uh, Bring yeah, a Trailer. Yeah, currently I think it was 9800 this morning uh, right before we came on. Yeah, I was going to ask what the expectation is for it. 
You know, we we really don't know because the market's so weird right now. I mean, a year or two ago, if we got to ten grand, I think we'd be pretty happy. Um, right now, it's there's just all bets are off on this. Hmm. Well, you know, with uh, all the mess over there in the Ukraine and Russia, um, I think that all bets are off on pretty much everything, including uh, the automobile industry. So, um, yeah, I agree. Yeah, uh, and that goes all the way down to used cars as well. Mm-hmm. Um, not to mention, and we're going to have a special section on the whole Ukraine mess and how it's affecting the automotive industry a little bit later on. But um, at any rate, uh, you know, TVR, I. I remember them vaguely. Uh, there were a few of them uh, around the United States. As a matter of fact, oddly enough, this week on one of the episodes of Wheeler Dealers, I like that show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, they did a TVR Griffith. Okay, and uh, it was a, a fascinating car. And I did not realize this particular one had a V8 engine in it. And oh, wow. It was bad to the bone. Wow. It, it doesn't look like the one that you have up for auction. This was a, a, a bigger car. It was a two-seat car, but, man, uh, it, was, it was rather unique. I don't think I've ever seen one in person, that the kind that they were uh, revealing on the show and the one that they fixed up. But uh, it was a clean car when they bought it, and uh, apparently there is a huge movement uh, over there in Great Britain with the TVR Club. And uh, they brought them all out and, and were part of the show. It was, it, did you happen to see it, Brad? I did not, but they, they actually, Wheeler Dealers did do, an, and it's an S2, not an S3 like this one, but yeah. they actually did have an episode. I think it was season six, episode 15, sounds about right. <laughs> I, I looked it up the other day. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm, no, I'm not that much of a fan of it. I mean, it's a neat show, but I, I don't have that kind of memory. But they, they did an S2. And uh, it was a really neat show. And then, I, and then uh, the other British auto show, car show over there, they had it on there as well. Um, but this car, this car's got the 2.9 liter Ford in it. Hmm. Okay. You know, it's a V6. It's a V6, so yeah. The old Mercury Mercur was this, XR4 was this called the, co- the clone that? motor or something like the that? The Mercury Mercur, he yeah. said, yeah. Yeah. motor. Oh, but I, th- well, I think that... Um, they called the 2.9. I thought they called that the Cologne motor, but and it was actually in the other Mercor, the sedan, as well as the sport car. Yeah, the the XR4 Ti, I think, right, is right. The, was the sedan, right? So that's that's the motor that's in here. It's a five-speed. You know, this thing only weighs like 2,200 pounds, fiberglass body. Um, oh, so wow. just shy of 200 horsepower, it'll go. I bet it will. So anybody looking for a unique sports car two seat convertible for somewhere under twenty five thousand dollars can go to bring a trailer this is a right hand drive car yeah right hand drive they they didn't make any of these in left hand drive so this is right hand drive only very unique and and it's legal in the united states it is yep all right well i i that's uh very interesting i uh i'm i'm hoping that you have all the best of luck in, in in uh auctioning this car off did you guys have to uh, do any work to it yeah we've done some work to it uh, again I'll, on bring a trail i can't mention it all because i didn't wasn't part of a lot of it but you know all of the brakes have been gone through all of the parts that needed to be replaced were that's one of the major things with this car brakes are always kind of an issue it's got a new radiator in it it really runs nice and cool um yeah i think it, it actually has a new master cylinder um, and the new vacuum pump. So all of that stuff is on Bring a Trailer. It's very, very well documented. Um, our guys did a great job. There's plenty of videos on there too that Ted shot when, when he uh, first got the car. So we've done quite a bit of work, and it's mechanically pretty sound. There's just a couple gauges I think inside that that don't work, but for the most part, it it's uh, pretty operational. Looks like a good potential track car. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, that, that's actually one of the, one of the shows that they had, they were comparing this to some of the other cars of its like over in the UK. And, uh, they, they drove it around on a track and I don't know, I've got a C7 Grand Sport. So to me, that doesn't look like a very good track. Car. No, but there are, there are classes for it. There, there, you've got the Mazda class. Uh, well, uh, at any rate, um, well, it, it sounds fascinating and the, the car itself it is all complete. It's all there. And what, 
What's the parts availability like on a TVR in the United States? No, too bad because it shares a lot of Ford parts. Um, but I think we had to put a Peugeot uh, or, um, or a vacuum booster on it. So it's a hodgepodge, really, when they built this. I don't think there's any parts that are really, you know, kind of proprietary to TVR. Um, they did a lot with Ford. So, uh, you know, I think it's just a matter of knowing what parts are are the com- compatibles in the other uh, and this is, uh, it, it, at least based on the pictures I see on Bring a Trailer, it's kind of a convertible but with an open targa back. Targa, roo- targa roof on it. It looks like both sides of it go down, but you can drive it with the, the rear glass up or with the rear glass down. Is that correct? That's exactly right. So it's, it's kind of a hybrid of a targa and a convertible. And and the entire top does hide back in the back to make it a full com- com- really unique. Really, just have to know how to shift with your right hand with your left hand instead of your right hand. That'd be weird. Yeah, that's Shifting why I said it lost me at right hand drive. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and it's got too. a European plate on it too. And where? D- where did he find it? Where did your board member find it? He, you know, he bought it from somebody that had already imported it. Uh, I'm not exactly sure where this one came from. He, he's done enough transactions on different cars. He's in the process of bringing, well, I guess, two old Corvettes and two old Daimlers or something from Florida right now. So he's pretty active with that. So I really don't know where this one came from, but it was, it was already in the States. And he sounds to be quite the collector. Okay. Um, so is there a timeline on getting this thing auctioned off? Oh, we lost the audio. I think on the auction ends in two days or a day or something. Two days. That I think yeah. the way, yeah, two days. So uh, hopefully fairly soon. All right. Well, we wish you the best of luck. It's God's garage, and uh, where do you where do you go to auction to uh, place a bid? Bring a trailer. Bringatrailer dot com. Mm-hmm. And what do you look up? I mean, T- they have more than one car T- on there. TVRS three. Sure. Just put that in the search bar. TVRS three. Is that right, Brad? Yes, sir. That's okay. it. I'm trying to copy and paste it over, but of course I have zero Mike, success. Michael, help you with that. All right. Well. Brad, it's always great to talk to you. Best of luck on on uh, getting this thing uh, auctioned off and getting the highest bid for the thing. And uh, and good luck on the truck. Sorry, uh, things have just kind of <laughs> the wheels have come off, so to speak. Yeah, let us know what it went for. Yeah, we will. Uh, thanks for featuring us again. It's always nice to be with you guys, and we'll get our building built, and you can come to a show from there one morning. Looking Thank forward you. to it. Thank you, awesome. Brad. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, and by the way, if you'd like to get in touch with us, you can shoot us an email. The address is info at inwheeltime.com. Uh, there's tons of news to tell you about. about. And um, I guess I can give you uh, a little bit of that right now. We're going to have a special section, and we're going to talk to um, our, our good friend out on the West Coast uh, about how the Ukraine invasion is going to or is affecting uh, the automobile industry and mainly the new car industry. Um, and he'll be with us uh, toward the end of the show because he's still in bed, I'm sure. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Nerad? Yeah, Jack Nerad. So um, that'll be coming up. All right. Um, Rivian. Okay. Rivian Automotive. You familiar with them? Yeah, kind of more driven around trucks than anything else. They're supposed to have some big monster truck. Well, thing. they made a terrible mistake. Um, they rolled back price hikes on EVs booked before March 1st on Thursday, days after facing backlash from customers following a 20% price hike. Oh. And they don't even have the cars yet, but they raised the price on them. And they've ordered the cars. Manipulating it. 
The startup automaker said on Tuesday it had increased selling prices of its vehicles by about 20% due to inflationary pressures and higher component costs. Yeah, well, no kidding. Under the previous plan, the base price of the Rivian R1T electric pickup truck, I don't know why anybody would go out and buy something that is totally unproven from a company that it's is a never startup built con- a vehicle. Never built a vehicle in their lives. Anyway. Uh, the base price of the Rivian R1T electric pickup truck would have risen to about seventy nine five from sixty seven five. Oh my wow. god! <laughs> While the R1 SUV to eighty four five from seventy thousand dollars. Rivian stock prices fell three point six percent to fifty one seventy in midday trading. Last week. Yeah, so now they're going to go even higher because they got to compensate for the loss of value in the stocks. They're going to sell them. What a. But they're going to sell out of them either way. What moron would do something like that? That was one of those. That's a Don Armstrong right there. Didn't think that <laughs> through very well. Well, I, I really think the, where you started the story with an unproven company that's never built a vehicle before, uh, what are you expecting? I mean, honestly, can you really expect a smooth flow of a transaction directly with the manufacturer, which in Texas is not in the business model? And I want to say it's almost against the law in Texas. You have you're not allowed to the manufacturers aren't allowed to sell direct to the consumer. So Rivian's doing that same two step Tes- shuffle that Tesla does. Mm-hmm. What? God. You shoot yourself in the foot yeah. right out of the box. And base your pricing before you know what your costs are. <laughs> and now that the costs are going through the roof and probably going to go even higher, yep. oh, yeah. um, their 20% price hike might not be enough. Speaking of which, how about the uh, gasoline price hikes that have been taking place? Because minute even minute. though that this co- country has more than enough capacity to produce its own oil we choose at to, the request we choose to import oil from russia and iran and iran Pe- what what pe- is, people why? who hate us yeah why do why do we do that when well, we have, when it's been proven he wants to build them back better them yeah <laughs> i i just don't understand it it doesn't make a moment's worth of sense because All he would have to say is just say, I'm reducing all the restrictions currently in the oil industry. Let's get producing. And price would fall tomorrow. And there's misinformation in the administration. You got Boris Baranoff and Natasha running. That's Boris Batonoff. Batonoff and Natasha over there running it. Boris and Natasha. (laughs) (laughs) Hunter Hunter doesn't have a job now. Hunter. Well, he's not getting any checks from the Ukraine at the moment either. And I think you said all the files have been burned now. Well, Jeep's electric future has a face now. Stellantis revealed an image of the Adventure brand's first battery electric vehicle on cool. Tuesday. Did you see it? Mm-hmm. The two-door? The, the, yeah. uh, during the rollout of the automaker's long-term strategic plan that covers the rest of the decade, Stellantis CEO Carlos Tavera said the electric crossover will support Jeep's worldwide quest towards zero-emission freedom. It's slated to arrive in the first half of 2023. That's right around the corner Mm -hmm. in car terms. Tavera said the plan calls for battery electric vehicles to make up all of the company's sales in Europe and at least half of U.S. sales by 2030. Solana said it's aiming to have more than 75 battery electric models globally before the end of the decade and to reach global annual battery electric vehicle sales of 5 million vehicles in that period. And the rush of zero emission models will see the debut of a hydrogen powered Ram heavy duty pickup later in the decade. Wow. The electric Ram 1500 is slated to hit the market before then in 2024. So you're going to have full size trucks from Ford, Chevy and Ram. Yep. Um, and sounds like Ram's going to be the first, first one out with a, uh, Heavy duty. That, that's what it as, a, as a hydrogen powered, but still a, a non petroleum based Where does fuel. Tesla's pickup fit in that? Good question. Yeah, they keep postponing that. I wonder what's going on with that. Why? Why do they keep postponing it? Well, first off, I'm I'm not a fan of it visually. I think that that space Jetson looking thing. Yes, uh, but you're not the target market either. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but you're not you're not the you're not the target market. 
Tar- Even though market, we are a big target. The target, market. the target market would be our grandchildren, basically. Sorry. Am I wrong? I think I was just told I was old. Yeah. And I, and I am. And big. <laughs> All right, well, I think I think isn't Hummer EVs just around the corner? That's supposed to be starting to get delivered in July. Good luck. And that's a little over hundred grand. All right, time now for this hour's car review. I had a chance to drive the twenty two Ram twenty five hundred. Available trim levels include the Tradesman, the Lone Star, the Power Wagon, the Laramie, the Limited, the Limited Longhorn. I reviewed the Lone Star Silver Crew Cab 4x4, as I like to call it, the Whopper. (laughs) What size and class? Well, it's a standard pickup, but it's a three-quarter ton. Uh, Many many passengers, five, including the driver. Exterior changes, it's part of the fifth generation uh, Ram. It was all new for 2019, and this is an all-new trim package called the Lone Star Silver. Uh, exterior features include the big, sexy Ram grille, uh, blackout or chrome, depending on the trim level that you choose. Engine uh, is, uh, well, it's an engine type emblem on both sides of the truck that says Cummins on it. Oh, yeah. And uh, I will tell you, it's one bad to the bone motor. Integrated tow hooks inside the lower grill. Uh, our Lone Star had optional chrome side, strap, uh, side steps on it. What I liked, the tough and tougher look uh, trim options that are on this particular. What could use improvement? Nothing. Interior highlights include the best dash of all manufacturers. And I say that with confidence. And, and they have been for quite some time. Yes, it it, uh, it it truly is. I mean, um, I'm driving uh, one of its competitors right now, and um, not that there's anything wrong with this one, but I, in comparison, personally prefer the Ram. The Ram. Uh, well laid out uh, interior with total functionality, small or big. Uh, infotainment screens. This one had the smaller one in it, but it was perfectly fine. I like the great big one, and it takes up the entire center of the dash. Wow. Multifunction center console works well. Uh, plenty of storage room under the seat, multifunction uh, storage functions uh, throughout. What I liked about it, the in floor storage. Oh, I think yeah. That's a very unique feature, and it really uh, floats my boat, as it Good. were. The 6.7 liter Cummins turbo dealer diesel turns out 370 horsepower, 850 pound feet of torque. Now, Stump there power. is an option on that. And it's called the high output, and uh, it uh, has over 1,000 pound feet of torque. Six speed automatic transmission, tow rating up to 20,000 pounds, haul rating 7,680 pounds. Wow. Um, the Gas mileage on this, or diesel mileage on this, it's non not mandated by law to be on the window sticker yeah, because three quarter ton truck. Because and I don't understand that stupid why. Uh, I got nineteen point four miles per gallon. That's Nin- that's pretty good for a, a gasoline motor. You get twelve thirteen miles per gallon. That's a huge with truck. a tailwind and exactly. a going yeah. downhill. So nineteen point four miles per gallon over two hundred and fifty six point five miles. What I liked about it: the power, the torque. What could use improvement? Nothing, honey. Ride and handling. Uh, now the air suspension is available on this. Uh, our particular one had coil springs on it. It's a rough ride with not it being loaded and towing something or, or hauling something. So keep that in mind. But I will say that it rides better than the one that I'm currently driving out there hmm. from the competition. Base trim price, $51,027. This is a work truck, folks. So uh, you're going to pay for a work truck. Base, with base trim at 51 51 Price is tested 75840 it's loaded up. Base model price, forty one three seventy. Wow. So if you get into a stripper, there you go, forty one three seventy. Competitors, uh, Ford's uh, heavy duty, super duty, they call it, thirty eight five forty. Chevy thirty nine five, and GMC forty thousand six hundred dollars. And that's my review of the twenty twenty two Ram 
2,500. You sound like you really liked it. I did. I did. It was a good-looking truck. I wish that I could hook it up to, you know, some... 20,000 pounds and drag it somewhere. Yeah. To see how it yeah. feels. Yeah, yeah some sort of bulldozer or something like that. <laughs> I mean, because it, it, it would do a fine job, no doubt. There you go. All right, uh, time now for the cruise-in calendar, and Conrad has that, I think. Yeah, um, on the 19th, uh, excuse me, on the 12th of March is the classic, classic car stampede in Belleville, Texas. On the 19th, we're going to be at Tailpipes and Tacos mm-hmm. out at Lupe Tortillas in Katy on Grand Boulevard and Kingsland. Um, stop out and say hi. We're going changing um, the format. Stan and the folks at Lupe are changing the format. They're going to do a quarterly show with awards and stuff as well. And it's all still fundraiser for Shirley's kids. And then also on the 19th um, in Galveston is Saturday at the Strand, and that is a fee. you got to pay 30 bucks to put your car in the show, uh, and that's going to be Pier 1 at 21st Street. Also on the 19th is the Central Texas Rolling Car Show. They'll be leaving Leander, Texas at 9.30 a.m., and then out there near Mr. Mars is on the 26th of March is Church on the Rock at the Spindletop Car Show in Beaumont. And then later on April 9th, Luby's Lake Jackson, second annual car show. And that's at 125 Westway in Lake Jackson, April 9th, starting at 9 a.m. All right. And uh, let's not forget the Chrome and Coffee uh, tomorrow morning. Yep, uh, I have that down for later. Okay. Chrome and Coffee at the Avalon Diner in the Fountains no, in Stafford. On stands uh, on the event at Luby Tortillas, that is not, you don't have to pay to enter your vehicle, correct? Correct, correct. Okay, it's, just want to point that out. All right. Thank you. Uh, the In Wheel Time Car Show streams on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and InWheelTime.com. Podcasts are available from your favorite podcast source. In Wheel Time Car Show continues right after this quick break. Saturday, March 19th, 2022 is the premiere of the all-new Tailpipes and Tacos Cruise In, and you're invited. Tailpipes and Tacos kicks off a new seasonal format, and first up is the Spring Cruise In at the Loopy Tortilla in Katy, 8 to 11 a.m., Saturday, March 19th. Tailpipes and Tacos will award trophies for the best hot rod, best classic, and best modern classic, so make plans now. Tailpipes and Tacos is Houston's coolest cruise in, and this is where you'll enjoy seeing the best hot rods, show cars, classics, and resto mods, along with Loopy Tortilla breakfast tacos and adult beverages. There's no entry fee, and all cars will automatically compete for custom Loopy trophies and other prizes. It all happens at the Loopy Tortilla Tex-Mex and Katy on the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard, just south of I-10. Get your ride ready for the all-new Spring Tailpipes and Tacos, Saturday, March 19th. It's going to be a huge car show, and spectators are welcome. The in time car talk show will be there, too. Let's Celebrate the arrival of spring and the return of Tailpipes and Tacos Saturday morning, March 19th, 8 to 11 a.m. at the Loopy Tortilla in Katy. We'll see you then, weather permitting. Is your business or company looking to stand out in a crowded advertising market? Looking to reach the real auto enthusiast? You found it. You're listening or watching In Wheel Time, and so are your fellow enthusiasts. The In Wheel Time Car Show now reaches half a million, and we can put together a marketing plan that will engage them in your product, business, or service. To get the tires rolling, just shoot us an email to our marketing director, Jeff Zekin. His address is jeff at inwheeltime.com. If you're in charge of your company's small, medium, or large business anywhere in the U.S., let the On Hold Company help you retain customers and promote your business on your telephone system. Promote special sales or company info when placed on hold. The On Hold Company provides custom on hold messages with professional male or female voices, licensed background music with no long term contract, no monthly recurring bill, and updates your messages as needed. Call the On Hold Company at 713 223 Hold or go to onhold.net. <laughs> 